Um, I just wanted to do um, heart problems uh, and the medical things. You know, like uh, going to visit, going to visit, um, going to visit hospitals and stuff like that, and getting diagnoses from um, from medical doctors. The main thing with that is um, there's there's a thing like when you when you hold a belief system from the collective in mind, and you have a lot of repressed feelings, it can manifest. Um, so when you're holding a lot of guilt or shame, and uh, you hold a, a belief like cancer, like uh, heart attacks, like heart problems, they can uh, they can manifest. And what's happening is because of the negativity, the unprocessed fear, guilt and shame, um, you, you pick up from the collective a, um, a belief system which correlates to that. So people who have a lot of shame and guilt or anger will often pick up an extremely life-threatening illness. People with very mild levels of shame, guilt and fear will pick up like uh, we we'll pick up something less. I mean, the Course in Miracles talks about guilt or shame. You can say the same thing. So when you have too much guilt and shame, um, you pick up from the collective consciousness belief systems which are um, which can kill you very rapidly. It could be an addiction or it could be an illness that will kill you because you deserve that. That's the disconnection from the source. Mm -hmm. If you have very little, you might get a cold. You know, because it might manifest in a cold because you feel. <coughs> I haven't got much guilt and shame, so I might get a cold. But if you've got a lot of guilt and shame, you might pick up something like uh, cancer, or you might pick up, like, uh, let's, um, have to, you know, let's kill myself with, uh, I need to kill myself with a banana overdose. You know, that's true. You know, so kill yourself with food, or kill yourself with uh, working in the stock market, you know, being crazy in, in a lunatic job. So you do those things rather than th choosing things. So. But I wanted to share this thing, which is that, you know, the power of belief. When you're in these negative states and people give you a belief, uh, to not take that on board. And I just wanted to share, share, especially when you go around doctors, because they have the perception of authority. So, uh, and you don't want to pick up a negative belief from anyone. Um, uh, you don't want to pick up, hi. You don't want to pick up a belief from anyone. So when I go to doctors, um, I'm always cancelling everything they're saying. Uh, because uh, doctors, you know, to the, to the ego within the collective, they have uh, an authority status. Yeah. So if they say, you know, they say things like, well, that, that means you've got a 70% probability that you're going, to be, you're going to get this within three years. They do that. You know, they've, they've got all their stats. And they say it with such authority. And, uh, and, and I just wanted to share this stuff if you go, because if you believe something and you've got a lot of negativity, you can actually manifest that, mm -hmm. um, yeah. even if you didn't have that prior to it. You know, so, and I wanted to share this, share this story very, very quickly. So, and it, sorry for those who've heard the story before. I, um, I had this huge, um, it was I think actually, yeah, as I was feeling my feelings, I had a huge asthma attack as I was trying to process out all the feelings. And I had it like a huge infection. My lungs were full of uh, uh, mucus and phlegm. I was admitted to the hospital. They took my blood pressure. I had extremely low blood pressure, and I was full. Of, my, my lungs were full of full of uh, fluid, and they immediately admitted me to to to, to hospital in the Royal Free. And they took my blood pressure extremely low, and uh, and also I had a, uh, had a, I had a pigeon, a disabled pigeon that I was feeding at home you see, that needed to be hand-fed regularly every, every several hours. And they said, and they, so they admitted me, and I was thinking of my pigeon at home, you know, not being fed. So, so and then I, so I said to them, their hospitalized, I said, I need to go home to feed my pigeon. And they said, well, you, you know, you've got extremely low blood pressure, uh, you know, so you can't go. And I said, well, I, I just, I'll just go very quickly and feed him, and I'll come straight back to the hospital. And then the, the, doctor, uh, the doctor went away and, and he came back and he, uh, he had a little conference with someone and he said, like, if you leave here, you'll have to sign this piece of paper. We take no responsibility if you die or anything and you leave this hospital. And because, you know, you could, you could just fall down or die because you're low blood pressure. So I knew that the thing was, that's a belief. Low blood pressure is not real, as the Course of Miracles says. It's just a belief. 
So all you have to do is, and I really wanted to feed the pigeon. And so I just did, I did the thing which is, and this is the thing if you ever get admitted to hospital, whatever they diagnose you with. So I just had to, they, so they give you the, they told me what my problem was, low blood pressure, don't leave, you're, you're hospitalized. So I just said, I cancel my belief in low blood pressure, I'm an infinite being subject, I need to what I hold in mind. And I said it like a mantra, mm -hmm. like a mantra, cancel my belief. And I walked on and I said it non-stop. So it was the only thing in my head, I cancel my belief uh, in low blood pressure, I'm an infinite being. That's the same thing as the Course of Miracles, God did not create blood pressure is not real, or I cancel my belief in blood pressure and infinite being. I said it non-stop, like at 100 miles an hour. I found that there's a very powerful spiritual technique. If you need to do something spiritually, just say it so fast that your ego doesn't have time to counter, you know, to go, to, you know, to say something negative, like I don't believe you, I don't believe this. So I did that, and I started to feel really strong and full of energy. I went and fed the pigeon, and I came back, and I was like walking, I was feeling really happy and full of energy and life. I came back and I said, and I was ready to now have the night in hospital because I fed the pigeon. And, uh, and, the, and the doctor looked at me and he, he asked the nurse to come over and take my blood pressure. And it was normal. I had normal blood pressure. And, and then he looked at me and he said, like, Look, discharge him. Yeah, Dis discharge the guy. Because it was like, and I, so this was the thing of like having a belief and then like cancelling that belief. You know, if you, and if you fully cancel it, it was like as I cancelled it, like my blood pressure normalised and my energy came. So that's the good thing with getting a hospital diagnosis, you know what to cancel, you see. But, you know, to believe it, to, but to believe it. And going into doctors, you know, I always have to be very, very careful because they, they come out with statistics and things left field. They can come out with something like, oh, I just, I just looked at your bloods. And that's looking very dangerous. So I have to do another test on that in case it's something. And then, and then you, you obviously go to the worst possible conclusion, you know, the, with what it is. So, so just cancel it, whatever they do. Because actually, if, they, if you're in a place of uncertainty and you go to a doctor, like, what could it be? And then they'll go, well, it could be that, and it could be that, and you could have a seven, if it's that, you have a 7% chance of that going away within six months. You, you know, if you believe that stuff and you spend the the next few weeks in tremendous fear thinking, oh, maybe I've got this diagnosis, or maybe I've got that mm -hmm. diagnosis. Whereas actually, even if you did have that diagnosis and you fully cancelled it, so you didn't have it. I had this thing, um, I can share this. So I'm in 12-step fellowships, and I had a lady, uh, I had a lady come up to me, because they all know I, I do this spiritual stuff. I had a lady come up to me and she said, oh, I've just got a diet. And everything that I say, because I'm on YouTube, everything I say on this uh, video, uh, please seek medical, medical thing. I take no, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not a medical doctor. Please consult your doctor and take their advice. Uh, uh, so it's on the video. Um, I'm not prescribing anything. So this lady came up to me uh, and, um, and said, oh, I've got a lump. They found a lump and I'm going to go back for a test. And she was scared. And I told her, look, just say I cancel my belief in cancer. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Just keep repeating that. And she was going to go back for a confirmation of what it was. And she went back and the lump had disappeared. You know, there was, there was no trace of it. So, um, so that's the type of thing uh, I would say. Uh, with uh, just, just feeling a lot of negativity and having doctors tell you diagnoses. Um, I'm, I'm all for like following what the doctors do, but cancelling what they've said. You know, like, uh, I, I'll just quickly share this so as many people know. Like I had, after a transplant, I had 13 medication for a transplant. And so I cancelled my belief in, that, in adverse effects from medication, that they have any negative side effects. Mm -hmm. uh, and I took all the pills, as they said, and within, um, within two years, and I have medical proof of this, uh, within two years, I went from 13 to 1 medication. And the doctor, the consultant said he, he knows of no other transplant patient that takes less medication who's, got a, on, a, who's on a kidney transplant. And that was by cancelling my belief in adverse side effects from. So you, as you cancel this stuff, you know, it tends to disappear in my experience. Yeah.